Uh, hello. Uh, okay, so on um, the piano Reddit, um, there's usually a couple of times a week people asking, how do we improvise? I want to learn how to improvise jazz solos. Um, I can play music, but if you take the sheet music away from me, I'm completely lost. Um, so this is going to be a little guide about how you can get started improvising things with a jazz sound, but without really going into the theory of it. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn theory. I think theory is really good. Um, theory helps describe things that you already do. Um, so you can understand them better, and it also helps you explore things that you can't yet do. So if you see a theory concept, you can try it out on your piano. Oh, that's really good. I'll keep hold of that. Um, but that's not the purpose of this video. This is just to get you started with a bit of a jazz sound. Um, if you really don't know where to start, um, it's kind of a cheats guide in a way. So um, don't show this to any teachers or anything like that, because they would be horrified, I'm sure. Um, quite often on those requests, people reply, well, to improvise, you need to know all your major scales and all 12 keys, you need to know all the minor scales and all 12 keys, you need to know your chords, your 2 five, one progressions, things like that. Um, and that's kind of a goal to aim for, but you don't... Um, just learning all that stuff, that gives you a really good vocabulary. So it's similar to learning hundreds and thousands of words in English or whatever language that's your native language, um, but not being able to tell a story with it. If you just regurgitate lots of words, it's not going to make any sense, but if you just use a few words and tell a really good story, um, people will be interested, and it's the same with music. It doesn't really matter how many scales and chords that you know. If you're not um, communicating, if you're not telling a story with what you're playing, then it's just going to sound like uh, noodles, to steal a quote from somebody else. Um, so anyway, to get started, um, for this I'm going to use a six chord. I said there's no theory, but this is, uh, this is a six chord. So starting with C, that's the one, that's the root, and then E. Um, that's the third, major third, and then G, that's the fifth, and then A is the sixth note. Um, so in the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's just that shape. So just play that. Um, it's good if you uh, use a metronome or I've got a drum beat going here. Just play around with that chord. Try and um, syncopate a little bit. You can play on the beat. That's really dull. You can play off the beat. That's a bit more interesting. Then you can change it around. And then just move it up one step. And so all your fingers just moving from there to there. started from so it's exactly the same shape just hold that um, hold that chord shape if you remember Phoebe teaching chords in friends this is I don't know what this is the crab or something so just hold that shape and just move it up and down That's the basics, so that gives you something to play with your left hand. Um, with the right hand, all those notes you just played, those are all the white notes, so all the C major scale. So you're going to do the same with the right hand. Okay, so just playing a scale up and down, that's really boring. Um, if you're on one note, so we'll take the G note maybe. So if you're playing that note, you can either play the same note again, you can either play a higher note, which is all of those, or you can play a lower note, which is those down there. Um, so to start with, we're just going to make um, go by single note steps. So it's as if you're playing the scale, but you're stopping and turning around and going backwards and forwards. So we'll start with the G. Note went to the second note, so we'll do that now. So 
Um, just doing single note movements, um, it's fun. You'll spend a lot of time doing that, but it can get boring. So you can throw in some uh, skip notes. So play however you want to describe it. Skip a note, play a note a third up, um, however you want to describe it. So. Three skip notes there, but that's okay. That's fine. That's jazz. Um, so one thing I found, I've um, on YouTube, you can quite often find transcriptions of saxophone solos and things like that. So one thing I found they did quite often. Um, if you take something that's shaped like a seventh chord, something like that, or like that. So you've got um, one, skip a note, another one, skip a note, another one, skip a note, another one. So you've got that kind of shape. They quite often use those little arpeggios or broken chords um, to feed in and out of their phrases. So. show you that at the end to keep you going. Um, but anyway, so you're kind of mixing up these things and then once you've gone beyond that you can go into larger intervals. to sound a little bit more musical now. At the beginning I was trying to keep it simple so you can see what my fingers are doing. Um, um, but when it starts to get musical that's when you need to use your ears or rather more accurately you need to have used your ears um, to listen to lots of music. Um, so if you can't hear what a good phrase sounds like it's going to be very difficult for you to play that. So listening to lots of music, whatever music that you like, either classical or jazz or um, whatever it is that you want to play. Um, listen to that music, copy it, um, maybe transcribe a few phrases if, um, if you think you're able to do that. Um, and just try copying the best way. I started playing guitar by learning over, uh, sorry, by playing over Cream records for hours on end, um, mainly using the blues scale. So if you've only got five or six notes and you're playing for three hours, you very quickly learn how to, to phrase things to make it sound interesting. That's all the white notes. Um, so jazz isn't all just about the white notes, obviously, there's black notes in there too. Um, and you might think, well, to use the black notes, we have to know our scales and our chords and things like that, and you kind of do, it's good to know all that stuff, but you can also cheat um, just by playing the black notes and then altering the notes that you play with your right hand. So if we take this chord, um, take that chord maybe, so I'm playing G, B, D, E, G, B, D, E, and all I'm going to do is just drop one of the notes to play a B flat instead. So Okay, then you just mirror that with your right hand. So we're playing the white notes to start with. I kind of do know what that, uh, the name of that chord is, but I didn't need to for the purposes of playing this thing. Um, and you can do it elsewhere as well. So take that chord, so I'm playing F, A, C, D, and for that one I'm just going to lower the A down to an A flat, so... So again, it's kind of a major to a minor sound. Um, and you do the same when you're playing with your right hand, so all the white notes and then when you play that chord with the A flat, then um, you play the A flat instead of the A natural with your right hand. Um, again,
again. Um, I could work out what that scale is. I think it's probably some kind of major um, harmonic major scale. Um, but instead of playing the white notes, I'll just put that A flat in there. Saying you can do it with two notes, so instead of playing that, I can play the B flat and the D flat. So I've got G, B, D, E. So I can play G, B flat, D flat, E. Interesting, sorry, my speech is awful. Um, interesting, so F, A, C, D, and for that one, I sharpened the C, so I went from there to there. So I'm playing the notes from the C major scale with the C sharp, so it's straightly speaking not the C major scale anymore, but it just gives an interesting little tension to it, so. you something that will get you started um, on playing jazz phrases without getting too hung up on the theory and the chords and things. Um, so literally just spend time doing this stuff. Um, you probably identify a lot of stuff that doesn't sound good, um, you identify, identify some things that do sound good, so keep hold of those and eventually maybe you'll learn what the hell you're doing. I still haven't, so don't worry about it. Uh, sorry, very rude of me, I almost forgot to show you the little uh, jazz ending. You can throw this jazz ending on pretty much anything you play and people will think that you're the new Liberace, not that the old Liberace was the new you, but anyway. Um, so whatever chord that you want to end on, so this is on a C. So you play a C there, and you could play a C major arpeggio all the way up. So that's the classical ending. Um, so the jazz ending, you play a few C major arpeggios and then you move it up a whole tone and you play some D major arpeggios. So it sounds like... So C, C major arpeggio, and then a D major arpeggio. So that sounds pretty cool. That gives you a Lydian feel because you've got a sharp um, whatever. I said I wasn't in theory. Um, there's another version of that that I actually got from the end of Led Zeppelin's Since I've Been Loving You, the live version from The Song Remains the Same, the video, not the album, which is a very long, um, very long reference. Um, and then once you've played uh, your C major and your D major, you move it up again, and then you play E major on the top as well. So you've got this going on. So it just takes it a little bit further out um, from the usual major. And then the major with the D sharp on. Sorry, the C major with the D major on. And then the C major with the D major and the E major on. So I've never tried playing an F sharp major on the top. Maybe I should give that a shot. That's rubbish. <laughs> 